sometimes, you know, children give up because they don't, they face too many barriers. They, they don't have the resilience. And the academic resilience is, is something that we can help to instill, that we can help kind of remove some of those barriers that sometimes get in the way. Academic achievement is absolutely connected to supporting children's resilience. The more a child is supported, um, held in mind by an adult, the better they'll do academically. And I think that's what we're seeing here in school. You know, our children have come from disadvantaged backgrounds, are achieving um, better than children from non-disadvantaged backgrounds nationally. Well, the school's been on a rapid journey of improvement in terms of exam success, but also in terms of leadership and encouraging student responsibility. It doesn't matter whether there's somebody who's working in the kitchen or whether there's somebody who's picking up litter or whether it's somebody who's organising the finances of the school or a classroom teacher, but everybody, everybody's driven by that same ambition that no child, regardless of whatever the barriers they face, but that no child should be left behind. You know, the challenge then becomes, of course, to see how everybody's job and what they do on a daily basis relates to that. The idea behind today was to bring a group of support staff, people who you don't normally think of as helping develop children's resilience, together, help them know that there's a whole load of research out there that supports, that tells us about how to support children's resilience, and help them think about what it is that they do to support kids' resilience in school, and also then to think about what the school might do to make that even better. So quite often students come to, to us who are very vulnerable and we can support them in lots of ways alongside academically but also emotionally, we give them a lot of emotional support. I think probably I've, I've been doing it and not realising that it was um, a, a useful part of my job. Um, it's not something that obviously is on a job description but uh, I think it's from this morning I've learnt that it is actually something that is very useful and that other support staff in other situations can be doing. I mean you can't take away from the importance of relationships first and foremost you know the relationships in the classroom between the teacher and the students is of paramount importance and that means knowing them. Because I think form is almost like it's like a big family you're all linked together everyone's friends there's no one who's always alone we, as teachers, as tutors, can facilitate things to help them or coach them even to, to help them get through the day and not worry about what's happening outside so they can achieve what they deserve. Mr Heineman was like really um, like one of the first teachers who really cared uh, and wanted to make school a better place and he was always walking around school so he'd like, talk to you, like make sure you were getting on like well. We have um, a series of frameworks um, around things like attendance, behaviour. Um, we also have a pyramid of need as well that we can use to highlight students whose needs go beyond um, intervention that we just need at classroom level. The pyramid of need is a, a point scored system that you would put a point to if a child had an SEN need, if a child was uh, English as an additional language, if they were a looked after child, um, and there's a number of categories, they're awarded a point for that. As their needs are increased they'll get more points and creating a pyramid effectively with those with most need being at the top of the pyramid. The key thing of the Pyramid of Need is that it is a visual tool that we have photographs of the students that are on the pyramid so that when a member of staff enters the staff room they can see the student. It means that if they don't teach them they still know who those students are. The key thing for us is, is to be able to offer personalised provision. So once we become aware of a young person's need, um, the first discussion that happens usually uh, with a head of year, assistant head of year, form tutor, would be to talk about actually what do we have out there on our inclusion support menu.
we operate a forest school where we identify those young people particularly who have been highlighted at transition from year six into year seven um, as being vulnerable as um, having social skills that may be slightly challenged by moving being being moved into a new school and uh, we pull them together as a as a group which in one sense actually helps them to, to to make friends and to develop some relationships but we don't do it in school we take them out and they go out to a local um, agricultural college at Plumpton just over the downs and they immerse themselves in the forest. We've already in the last year used agencies to provide us with one-to-one -one mentoring and coaching for students if that's been appropriate. We've done some small anti-bullying group work and small confidence building group work. One of the agencies that we've used um, and we refer to quite regularly uh, for both students re-engaging with learning but also those students who um, for them the, the normal academic diet isn't appropriate um, and that's the whole YMCA. The main aim is to try and get them to be re-engaged back into education earlier so we get them at Key Stage 3, so 11 to 14 and hopefully get them re-engaged into their learning, positive about um, learning environments to hopefully then not have that problem in key stage four. And now I'm doing sports leadership with YMCA. I actually got offered a job with them, like coaching kids. Um, and then when I when I'm with them, it's just more relaxed. Like rather than being at school fully um, and just having a full timetable, it's more relaxed. So when I do come to school, it's uh, I can just behave better, knuckle down, like, get on with my work. All those tiny little instances in a child's life of an adult actually supporting them to come up with a solution to a problem themselves rather than just telling them adds up to supporting them academically over their school career. We took that work that Angie Hart had done around um, looking at all the elements of resilience and what makes up a resilient child and put together exercises that could be done in 20 minute bite-sized sessions in tutor group. Today I was working on a screensaver for the kids about images that make them feel safe and happy, something that they can access if they're feeling maybe a bit down or struggling a bit, you've got an image that immediately brings you back up, brings you kind of, makes you focus on something a bit more positive. It used to be me and my little cousin, when we were small, and uh, this picture used to be in other country, not here, in Sudan. Yeah, and as he's not here, he's not in this country. So when I open it, I just remember him and I feel happy. So if you want to do something that represents you and other people find it a bit different and tease you for it, uh, you carry on because it's something that you've done yourself and you want to carry on doing that because it's your personality. I feel really happy seeing it because I've got like a reminder of everything that is important to me. We were learning about resilience and covering it and we've got um, iBooks on our iPads and we're making books all about resilience. Um, we've brought in iPads for all students right the way across the school um, and, and that means that everybody, regardless of what background they've got, they've all got the same access to that world-class education. Celebration it forms a huge part of our calendar now. It's important to recognise progress, not just achievement, but progress, and to ensure that children from all different groups are given that same access, that same confidence, that same ability to aspire. And if you have a range of strategies to, to show what you're doing and they're focused, well-planned and well-evaluated, and they're having an impact on student progress as they are here at Hove Park, then um, you'll find that Ofsted will be very interested in, in, in your journey. It is about driving up the academic results, but I think actually there's a real commitment to, to recognise the whole child and all of their skills and talents. Academic resilience means all students can um, face the, the challenges and the, the pleasures of being in school, um, whether it's an academic challenge, whether it's something to do with relationships, uh, and thrive and develop and uh, succeed. Mm -hmm.